Hi folks, welcome to our today's technical um, yeah, webinar. My name is Almar, I'm head of technical support and training and um, yeah, we prepared some uh, interesting highlights for today, which is DALI Actuator Four Fold Communicating Broadcast. A fantastic new product which I want to introduce you now. What is your discovery? Obviously, we talk about colors. Yes, indeed, we do. So this fantastic controller is uh, developed and acting according to DALI 2 standard, supporting all kind of communication, which are with all which is required finally to control switch gears in um, reasonable, sophisticated project. All in all, we do have here four channels, <clears throat> four separate channels, and you can choose finally what you want to do with channel one, with channel two, channel three, and channel four, however, <clears throat> your choice. All in all, per channel, you can apply up to 30, you listen right, three, zero, lights directly on one stretch on one channel. <clears throat> Nevertheless, <clears throat> which type of LED you intend to drive, if we talk about monochrome lights, if we talk about lights which are supporting uh, color temperature control, <clears throat> or if we do have here lights which are supporting color lights, so RGB or RGBW. And, if you like, we can control as well Dolly Relays, Dolly 2 Relays. Yeah? So that means we are controlling and supporting all the communications in regards of data type 8. So that means all this, what is currently required in sophisticated projects, we can with this fantastic controller. And by the way, you discover here data secure. So this product here, all in all, is supporting data secure. All our new Taven products are supporting data secure, basically. So, if I turn this appliance, you discover here this badge <coughs> is uh, sticked or glued directly here on the appliance and we put in the packing the reasonable security card, which is a copy finally here of the FTSK code and probably you know, and, but uh, for all those who are not so skilled in regards of data secure, you need this FTSK code, this QR code finally, to operate such a product, product in data secure communication. <clears throat> here you can type in or write in however the physical address or the, the location and here you type in the type of the product however and that's it. <clears throat> to the device, you discover here we need to apply 230 volt, here is uh, the bus communication we do have here as outputs, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. You discover here it's just DALI communication. You need just the two wires coming from or going to, however, to the LED lights or to the lights which you intend to drive. And I prepared a, a short, let's say, a demonstration. So if you intend, for instance, to control such kind of LED stripes, yeah, in uh, aluminium frame or whatever, so for indirect lights to give a room a specific, let's say, color for, for a specific uh, emotion, whatever. So then you can use such one. You need a switch gear, which is probably some like that. So we discover here RGB and W, these are the color channels. We discover here we need to apply plus minus from uh, a DALI power supply. And these two, these ones, are the most important ones because this one, you have just to wire here directly on this channel and then this channel here, if you did the setting right, is controlling here colored LED lights. Okay, simple and fantastic from the abilities. One step further, <clears throat> so when it comes to control any kind of colors, <clears throat> so you discover here we need, let's say, a specific byte format and uh, this byte format finally <clears throat> is either, so for color temperature control we need 2 byte, for RGB 3 bytes if we have uh, one communication object, 
to choose the reasonable colors or if you have RGBW, so separate white channel for instance, then finally you need a powerful push button which is supporting you <coughs> finally um, to control on off, to control fading in, fading out, so the dimming and finally to choose the reasonable color um, which you intend to use for your room or for this special effect. However, you can, if you like, separate these color channels. So this is one single channel, 6 byte for RGBW, but we can separate as well. So each color can be controlled totally separate with a control command, which is one byte. You can. I will show you later on in the ETS application and like usual you know if we talk about KNX so in all the cases in all our exercises and technical webinars we will have an insight a look inside into the ETS application and later on sure like usual we do have here a practical uh, exercise to make you acquainted to show up how, to, how it works and how you have to imagine the realistic let's say solution yeah, all in all, <clears throat> we have to distinguish finally if it comes to a DALI light control. So we have two options. <clears throat> Either you use such kind of DALI gateways like you do have here. For instance, they are powerful, sure, more powerful definitely like the fourfold uh, um, dimming or a DALI actuator. However, they can support you with uh, 64 outputs, so for 64 switch gears or lights, however, or even if you need more, 128 lights, however, depends on how sophisticated, how yeah, prestigious and how powerful finally the functions finally should be. But not in any cases, such kind of uh, really powerful gateways are required. Imagine, you do have, just as an example, you do have a private villa and um, the owner is just asking you for I want to have some color effects in my living room for instance or I do want to have um, yeah as an example color temperature control so you know the color temperature control has a certain positive impact on the human being <clears throat> I want to have this so in this case a gateway is probably oversized and the DALI 44 broadcast dimmer is giving you a perfect and a really brilliant result in regards of that. Or imagine, for instance, you have to do the designing for a school. So, you know, from time to time, some lessons has to be written. And uh, to give the students a certain, let's say, positive effect, so you can change the color temperature more to the cold white color, so in around five to 6,000 K or slightly above. So this has a positive impact on the concentration. And this is confirmed by medical researchers, however, that it is like it is. Or if you turn finally this color temperature down to a more, let's say, warm um, light, around 3000 uh, K for instance. So this calms down the people a little bit. It's more for relaxation, however. Yeah. So we can have such effects like this. Yeah. And this you can do in a brilliant way with the DALI 4 actuator, however. So there are some more options as well. So for hospitals, yeah, for, so for the recovery to enhance, to boost the recovery of the people especially these people in hospitals, in a hospital uh, a room, however, <clears throat> they need help, sure, from the medical side and from the biological light as well. We can do some for the, for the faster recovery of the people yeah, with specific light control. Yeah. In this case, it's not in any time required using Dolly gateways. Today, we don't talk about these different DALI gateways here. We do it in, a, let's say, in, a, in another webinar, which is heading in the next couple of weeks. So be eager and uh, we would highly appreciate if uh, you share the time 
in this time, in this case, with us. Yeah, so you discover, so from the positioning, this fourfold dimmer is positioned more or less in the lower end in regards of function and price. But nevertheless, you discover is absolutely powerful. But if it comes again to more prestigious solutions, so then the dolly gateways are our options from Theban side. Yeah, to go more in that details, that means, <clears throat> so what can I do in general with this fantastic dimmer? So I can apply, for instance, it's just an example, on channel one, a monochrome light. So I have one stretch of light in a room, which is just giving you a monochrome a standard white light. Then we do have, for instance, on channel two, we do have here, let's say, uh, applied a stretch of colored light for a meeting, for an event, whatever. <clears throat> um, you can call up a specific color, for instance, the color of uh, your company, however, or whatever you like, however. And uh, we can do as well, like mentioned a few seconds before, color temperature control. So to boost, to enhance, for instance, the well-being of the people, of the visitors, whatever. Yeah. And you can do, theoretically, you can mix this together. So that means you do have here monochrome lights. You can apply at the same channel um, lights which are supporting the color temperature control. And you can apply as well on the same stretch um, colored or color control LEDs. What happens here? You can on off, all are acting accordingly. You can fading in, fading out, so that means dimming up, dimming down. All of them will act accordingly. What you can't is to manage a different color temperature. There is no chance to do. And neither you can't select a specific color. So <clears throat> this is not possible. This is the difference from a dolly gateway and with the Dali Gateway you can, you can separate, you can do some grouping, you can choose uh, the different functions totally separately and do the reasonable assignment. With a broadcast dimmer or with a broadcast communication dimmer, for instance, so then you can just share on off, fading in, fading out and that's it. Okay? This you have to know. But it will work definitely because all these uh, lights, if they are developed and uh, acting according to Dali 2, they will definitely uh, work together, but again, no color cho choice uh, or color temperature choice is possible. What you can, if you like, you can apply on these uh, reasonable uh, lines here, you can apply as well Dolly relays, if they are acting according to Dolly 2. So what could be the purpose? For instance, you switch on the light, probably triggered by a present sensor, yeah? So the light is turning on, so that means someone is uh, now in the room, having a meeting or whatever, and uh, then you switch on the relay <coughs> at the same time. So that means now prob probably we do have here uh, the start of air recovery, so the relay switches uh, a fan or such like that, or you have the option if you do have probably a light which is not supporting communication to Dolly, so then finally you switch on the light and with this really powerful relay which is supporting you with uh, 13 amps then you can drive these lights directly as well. So these are the options, the abilities what finally you can do with. Yeah, for all those who have probably not that deep deep, deep insight uh, in regards of DALI communication or probably doesn't have any skill in regards of using uh, DALI gateway or communication between uh, Kyenix and DALI. We do have here uh, yeah, a small drawing, so which gives you a, probably a better idea so how it is acting together. We discover here, so we do have here the green line, which is finally the Kyenix communication. On this Kyenix communication, there are uh, applied some recent sensors, some actuators, some fan coil or heating actuators, whatever, and some push buttons uh, and further on. And um, on the other side, we do have here on the output side, <coughs> we do have here switch gears, talking 
Dolly. We do have here two wires, as you know, from KNX side. Dolly is as well two-wire communication, similar to KNX, similar. Yeah, <clears throat> but all these lights have to support, finally, here on the orange line, Dolly 2 communication. Yeah, and you can apply here, like here shown in this uh, example here, the Dolly relay as well. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, but what you need, what you need, if you want to drive this powerful actuator and dimmer, you need a powerful push button. A powerful push button who is supporting you with a two byte value if you intend to control with one of these four channels a LED light which is supporting you or controllable finally um, according to let's say the color temperature so more warm white or cold white however if you intend for instance to control RGB so red green and blue or RGBW, which means we do have here a separate white channel. And for that purposes, you need a powerful push button with a reasonable ability to give you one byte, two byte, or three byte or six byte control communication. And this, for that purpose, I'm using here the Eon <coughs> or the Eon series. Left on top is Eon 102, so two fold uh, push button. This one here, Eon 104, four volt, and this one here is the most powerful one. It is a room temperature controller plus more than 20 functions which you can define, which you can specify what you want to do with. You discover here a small display, you discover here some icons which you can use, and you discover here as well some, let's say, feedback displays, so how is currently the status and whatnot, and I'm using this for the specific, let's say, example, which I'm using in a few minutes, showing you what is possible, what you can do and how easy it is finally. Yeah, um, just a few, let's say, simple examples I will give you. So if we talk about, let's say, KNX standard push button, so which communication we need, like if you control a universal dimmer or a dolly gateway, you need on off, you need brighter darker for fading in, fading out. You need a reasonable feedback if you intend, for instance, to um, support here or to control here the status LEDs of a push button. And uh, that's it. If you intend to control color temperature, so then you need an additional one. So the first one, two, three, same, same, like with the standard dimming. But in this case, we need color temperature. And the color temperature is a two byte value which you share which you have to share from the push button to the dimmer and uh, if you intend to control colored leds yeah rgbw for extension for uh, for example um, <clears throat> so then you need the push button which is giving you um, depends now how you want to do it three byte or for rgb or six byte for rgbw so then you have to share this communication from the push button to the dimmer itself. These are standard push buttons. But Tiban has really a fabulous solution with a um, yeah, unique application. What I want to commit to you, or what I want to share with you. So this Eon 108, which is this one here, when you have finished the download, you want to control the lights, to up and down the blinds, to control the heating or the fan coil uh, or the fan speed, you want to monitor any kind of values and whatnot. If programmed, then you can operate manually with on, off, here selecting, for instance, the reasonable function, <clears throat> so you flip from right to left, left to right, however. But if you have, for instance, a mobile, assuming you have, and uh, you have download in the um, App Store and the Play Store, the reasonable Eon Play app, 
then they have a reasonable advantage. And this is absolutely unique, which you get just from Theban. You open Bluetooth communication, you start searching, you click on um, yeah, link, and then in the display you get a unique PIN code for this specific Eon, which is in the closer area of your app. You type in, in your mobile, <clears throat> the reasonable um, PIN code, then these two appliances, your mobile and the Eon, are paired, so that's the naming of it. And then what happens? You get exactly this one here. You have not to do anything. You have not to waste your lifetime <clears throat> to create a specific visualization or whatnot. Just with this pairing between your mobile and the Eon 108, you get the reasonable project which is in here on your mobile as an app and you can operate and control directly with your app for free. Fantastic, isn't it? Well, <clears throat> so if you intend to do this, you need to know that for this purpose we need one additional group address, which is you have to share percentage value. That means you need a, a communication object, percentage value from the Eon, you need the communication object uh, percentage value from the dimmer, and that's it. That's the only thing what you have additionally to do if you want to control RGB light, color control or whatnot. And then you can operate manually with your mobile, with your tablet, however you like it. A fantastic solution. <clears throat> all in all, four channels, each channel 30 switch gears which you can apply directly. This fantastic dimmer is supporting you with uh, data type 8 communication, is supporting you with data secure. So now we flip to our ETS and uh, for that purpose <coughs> so we share and I'll share now the inside of the, of the application with you. I take this one here, the group addressing we are, <coughs> let's say, using later on. So in regards of the parameters, channel 1, configuration objects. So in this case, for instance, channel 1, you intend just to control standard lights, so monochrome LED lights or lights of another, let's say, uh, type, however, so you need just to open that. Here you need to know <clears throat> what are the abilities of these lights. So how far or how is the, 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 the frame finally in which you can dim, in which these light can be operated. <clears throat> From my expertise I would like to say, so if you type in here or if you use here approximately 5% so it will work. Below you will hardly see any, let's say, dimming effects. <clears throat> Five is okay. The maximum dimming, in this case, I want to share some experience with, with you, which means many of, of lights in general, especially specifically now, we talk about uh, just now about LEDs in former times, uh, glow lamps and halogen lamps, but uh, they had the same effect, between 90 and 100% you don't have any, let's say, specific additional gains in terms of brightness, of lumen. Yeah? So that means most of the energy is wasted energy in terms of warmth. Depends from light type to light type. <clears throat> this you can check on your own. So take, a, let's say, a lux meter or so, put it under your light, dim up and watch carefully so between 90 and 100 percent what is uh, ongoing yeah and watch carefully on the lux meter and depends on what type of light you will have you won't discover any let's say specific changes anymore so this is wasted energy and probably you can limit it here so the maximum value dimming value could be probably set to 
90%. It's your energy which you save. The dimming time from 0 to, or from, in this case, from 5% to 100% could be, depends on, uh, let's say, the lights, 4 seconds, 6 seconds, approximately like that. Below it could be difficult. Imagine, you are the end user, <clears throat> you just press the dimmer for fading in <clears throat> and you have just two seconds time to stop to find your value somewhere on the way from 5% to 100%. So it's hardly to find your desired value in regards of the dimming value. In that terms, I would like to say, so four seconds could be okay, six seconds, okay, you have to press a little bit longer, but you have more time to find finally your reasonable value which you desire, <clears throat> your choice, yeah. But below, I wouldn't recommend. I could recommend, yes, when it comes to, for instance, uh, when it comes to control, let's say, staircases or corridors. And if you want to start this light and you want to have this, let's say, welcome, let's say, welcome scene. So softly switching on the light, not switching on. So softly fading in. It's comfortable for your eyes, and it gives a certain exclusivity. Finally, so then, okay, in this case, if it is automized, so then I will say yes. So two seconds or so are okay, but definitely not in your living room or in a seminar or a webinar room, however. Okay. So, this is, let's say, standard configuration. But now, in this case, I want to have now color control. I intend now to set, for instance, the lights or the lights which I want to use in schoolroom or whatever. And in this case, I want to do some color temperature control. I do have here the choice if I want to have color temperature control, RGB or RGBW. I choose, for instance, color temperature. And now you have the choice, finally, <clears throat> to specify. So if I have, for instance, a forced mode or a permanent mode, if I want to have a specific, let's say, color temperature, your choice. Yeah. More important, finally, is so the minimum color temperature and the maximum color temperature. I do have here 2000 uh, K as a color temperature, as a lowest value. So that means we have a really a dark and a, a red intensive light. And the maximum color temperature is 6000 K, which is a really a blue, white, blue, uh, glaring uh, light. <clears throat> so these are your settings. But the, the lights <clears throat> which, you are, which you have installed on the ceiling are probably just able to support you between 3,500 and uh, 6,000 K. And you wonder if you want to uh, dim down or to choose this color temperature down to 2,000 K. So don't wonder if it fails, yeah, because your light is not able to give the reasonable support. So first of all, have a brief insight, a brief look inside the technical documentation or the specifications, however, what are finally the reasonable ab uh, abilities of the light which you intend to use. Um, important, finally, the dimming response here, same stuff. <clears throat> so you choose, you have to choose finally. So what you want to, um, yeah, what you want to do, what is the minimum brightness, what is the maximum brightness, uh, how is the speed and so on. So application is same, same like this group before. Then I open channel three, configuration options. So here I turn to color control. And in this case, you do have here <coughs> another option, either RGB. So for that purpose, probably it might be good if I open here this view. So and then you see if I modify here some, you see directly which communication objects are popping up. <clears throat> so I have chosen here RGB color. So RGB color, and if I want to have uh, <coughs> the the information, so what type of control command I need, you see here three bytes because I have just RGB. Then three byte is sufficient. 
if you do have a light which has a separate white channel and if I choose such like that I click on that as well and then you discover okay now I need a more powerful uh, uh, control command coming from a push button or from a visualization that I have finally the chance to on off, to dim, to choose the colors however. This is the object type which is combined. You have just one communication object for all these functions, so color selection and so on. But you can do separate and you see now what happens here. So now you have a separate control command to control the red, to control the blue, to control the green and to control for instance the white uh, color. And if I double check now, so what is the the need of control command you discover here we talk about one byte yeah so you can operate totally separately if you want to have in this case you have the option if you have for instance a permanent on function as a kind of uh, don't know alert or whatever so you can use for instance here a specific color which you like to have here you can mix additional white color so if you want to have really a dark and a really a powerful red, so you reduce definitively here the partition of uh, the white, it's up to you. This setting here is finally giving you um, yeah, the option. I leave today the room with, don't know, I left it in green color. When I enter tomorrow morning and I press the push button, so then I get the welcome in which color? Green, sure. And if you want to have in any cases, whenever someone is entering, for instance, the room or switching on the light, you want to have one specific, one preset color. So then you use ETS parameter, you use here the color picker, for instance, and for instance, you want to have here this uh, yeah, kind of blue, and that's it. Additional white, okay, you know how it works. And here the setting you know as well. Probably it might be of interest for you. We do have here the dimming curve, so the calculation of the dimming curve, logarithmic, linear. So a human eye is uh, yeah, recepting the natural light or artificial light, however more in a logarithmic way of reception. Linear means it is really like a street. You get, you, you give, for instance, 40% and you receive 40% output. You give 60% and you get 60% output, so it's linear. Logarithmic, you know, logarithmic curve, so there are, the, the changes are definitely different and so a logarithmic curve is more fitting to the human eyes to the human reception of light in general your choice and by the way the light has to support this ability as well yeah well it looks not that really complicated but the question probably pops up yeah if i want to change temperature color or if I want to have color selection or whatnot, how can I do this? And for that purpose, I open here the Eon 108. Function one is just switching. So that means my configuration is just a switching configuration. So it's just to on off some lights, whatever. Or if I intend, for instance, to support color temperature. So if I open here you discover two bytes. Yeah, so exactly what we need. So mode of operation, if you want to have fixed values, so for instance one color temperature is, uh, let's leave it here at uh, 3300 and the other value for instance is 6000. So with the push button uh, one you call up 3300K, which is preset here, with a push button on the bottom, 
your call up, for instance, 6k. So these are fixed values, two fixed values. Or you can do, for instance, a movable value. So first of all, do we start? Be reminded, check please what are the abilities of your LED light supporting color temperature. Yeah, so you set here. And the maximum is, for instance, here 6000, assuming that our light is good enough to support us starting from 2500 to 6000. And the steps, for instance, are in this case 100k. So if you hold the button, so then in steps of 100k, you can select your individual desired color temperature if you like. You can put in some descriptive uh, text and this will be displayed later on in the EON 108. Or you can do, for instance, or prepare a value list. <clears throat> and uh, in the value list, for instance, you can choose how many values, preset values, you want to use, you intend to use, for instance. You start with 2500. Next step is, for instance, 3500. Next step is, for instance, 4,500. And the last one is, for instance, 6,000K. So then you press once, you call up 2,500. You press another one is 3,500. Another one, 4,005. And finally, you will do have six. If you press again, so we start from 2,500 again. So you can do it this way. And you can, sure, you can prepare here up to 12, let's say, preset values in this, let's say, value list. It's up to you. Okay? So, you see, fantastic support from E.ON. I take another option, which is, in this case, RGBW. And here, same stuff. You can preset here, for instance, two fixed values. You take here the color picker, for instance, these... Uh, um, yeah, green, yellow, however, and uh, then you want to have, for instance, a nice green, however, so these are two fixed values. You press on push button, uh, which is in the upper line, <clears throat> so then you call up the yellow green, and if you press on the bottom uh, push button, so then you get the reasonable green, or same stuff. If you want to have a value list, and here you know how it works now, you can type in here or select here the reasonable colors which you intend to use. And so you create your individual color list which you can call up. Here is, uh, to, has to be typed in. So the, let's say the white, the, par, uh, the other partition of, of the white color, if you don't want to have, so you type in zero. If you want to have more uh, smooth uh, blue light, however, so then you give, for instance, 128 or such like that. So you can mix however you like it. You can type in here a descriptive uh, text if you like. So it's how it works. Yeah. And if I open now, this is uh, F2 RGB. Yes. So when you see here, this is exactly this six byte value. And with this six byte value, you can choose the reasonable colors. I can, or I do, one step back, and we do have here this, yeah, this one here. So that means I have to, I have here this six byte. Um, if you intend to control separate color ch channels <coughs> in uh, the DM4 in the Dali gateway, so in this case, there is enough. If you use, for instance, a dimming command, and then you can control with the dimming, uh, the reasonable uh, percentage command then you can call up the reasonable colors by sending a percentage value. That's it, how it works. So it's not really complicated. And uh, to give you the reasonable insight, so for that purpose, we open now the group addresses. I do have here, for instance, these are the standard lights you discover here. This is the on-off from the, from the DALI dimmer. This is the on-off command from E.ON coming. This is bright or darker, like usual, if you use uh, for universal dimmer feedback, if you intend to drive, let's say, um, yeah, uh, status LED, however, and the dimming value, for instance, you need if you want to operate with 
mobile and with the Taven uh, Eon app. Yeah? Same stuff we do have here. Then we do have here the color temperature on off, sure. We do have here brighter darker, sure, feedback is okay. Now we need here this color temperature. Color temperature, you know, is two byte value sharing from or coming from Eon, controlling here exactly this reasonable channel. <clears throat> and if you want to have the reasonable display or feedback in the display, uh, then you have to link this as well. And with this percentage value, you can finally operate with the app. When it comes to color control, on off, brighter darker feedback, color selection, we support here with the six byte value and that's it. I prepared in my exercise finally uh, a scenario or options to call up scenarios. So in this case I have implemented all these four channels of the DM4 and I do have here a communication object prepared from the Eon coming which is a one byte and with long press I can store or file the current um, yeah, scenario with a short press I call it up with long press I store it and with a button with a second button I can do another or can prepare another let's say scenario with a different style of color different style of color temperature and so on we will do it immediately now in our practical part of our yeah, lesson today. So for that purpose, <coughs> I turn now to this, um, to this view here. Yes, I reconnect again. So, and here you are. We do have here the reasonable, let's say, application. I do have currently got the, the feedback <coughs> of uh, my demo board here. Uh, obviously, I do have here short trouble with uh, this light here. Nevertheless, it doesn't impress me currently. So, with the push button, with the Eon, if I click on that, so it starts with a minimum brightness. If I hold this push button, so it dims up. And with this one, I dim it down, short click, I off it. Next step, this light here, I want to receive more light. Okay, dim it up, I get here the feedback, uh, 60%. I dim down again, or short click, and off. Next step, we do have here color temperature light. I have here currently 60%. So I want to have a little bit more, so I turn to 60, uh, 70% <clears throat> and now next step is color temperature. Now I call up 2000K, so it turns more to the yellow one. I call up 3500, so it turns more to a white light. I call up 4500, it becomes more icy cold light. And now finally, I do have here 6000K, so now it turns more to the blue color feedback. Okay? <clears throat> and I off it. Next step. This one. <clears throat> so next step. I do have here the color area, the colored area. <clears throat> Dimming up down. <clears throat> okay? So, yeah, I think this is good view. So then I turn to color, <coughs> red. Now it should turn to a kind of orange. Okay, this is currently the difficulty with the camera <coughs> to, uh, to, to tap the, the right color. Now it turns to uh, yeah, yellow green. Now to a real green. I think this is uh, really good to discover and to see. We do have here now a light bloom. <clears throat> now we have uh, dark blue, so it should be like that. Dim a little bit down, light blue, and probably, yeah, so now it becomes better. That's uh, the difficulty <clears throat> if you take a digital camera to get uh, to receive and uh, to share with you with a reasonable good, <clears throat> let's say, uh, uh, color uh, feedback. Okay, so it works. <clears throat> 
Now I want to do the following. <clears throat> I do have here my app. And in the app, I change now the dimming so you discover it becomes brighter. I choose, for instance, here the different colors. Yeah, you see it works. Then color temperature, <clears throat> I call it up. Well, currently I do have here 4500K. I can turn to 6000K or I, by clicking on uh, this icon here, so it turns to a warm light. Okay, I do have here my reasonable light <clears throat> and this reasonable light gives me currently a switch on minimum brightness of uh, 40%. Can dim it up. However, it works. So, and uh, same stuff. I think you believe <clears throat> that uh, light one in the upper row will work as well. So I do now the following. So I do have here, for instance, uh, around 60%. The color temperature is approximately 2000 K. Yeah, it's good to discover. This one here I put to, let's see, yeah, down to, oh, okay, it's not visible. So then, okay, take more brighter light. Yes. Um, the color I turn to, for instance, this dark blue. And now I'm doing the following. <clears throat> I told you the thing with the scenes is rather easy to, to manage. I do have here prepared an event scene. So I take now this push button here and I press longer than three seconds. Okay. Then I do the modification and call up, for instance, green and probably the dimming value is down. Then in this case, I want to have, for instance, a more icy cold light. This one shall be brighter and this one shall be darker. <clears throat> so you see a totally different scenario, which we do have here now. And we do have here the scene button too. And I press here as well for more than three seconds. Okay, so far, then I have prepared your central off. This I'm using now, so all lights are turning off now. So, and back to scene. So I call out, call up now with a short press, scene one. You see exactly it's what happens. I call up scene two, the things are changing. And all these you can do as well with your mobile, with the app. The color will change now and you will have a different scenario, definitely. So that's how it works. And central off, all of the lights are switching off now. Okay, so far. And I told you some in regards of relays. For that purpose, we do have here implemented the DALI 2 relay and this DALI relay is linked on this DALI communication with this light. With this switch, I disconnect now these lights. What happens? This is a normative regulation from DALI side. If there is a disconnection to DALI communication, we have emergency function. So that means this light turns on immediately on security aspects. And if I click on, watch on the left-hand side on, the, on our uh, app, if I click on that now, so I can off and I can on, you see this relay is switching accordingly like you want to have it. Yeah, same communication and that's it. So and if I switching now back to the light, then the relay is not working again accordingly and the light I can switch on, switch off like I want to have it. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you get some 
yeah, interesting insights in regards of DALI, of DALI dimmer, and the abilities. And um, we do have some more interesting technical webinars in the next heading weeks, so always worth to have a look on our webpage. And uh, I would be happy and um, looking forward to see you next time.